Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 in the July 2021 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's start by taking a read of the information. S Light Wholesale is owned and operated by Heaven Prospect. Her business's financial year ends on 31st May 2021. The following trial balance was produced on that date. Okay, so we have a trial balance here, which we'll go through in a little bit. Uh, we have usual items. We also have some additional information. Inventory was valued at 32,000 on the 31st of May 2021. That's the closing inventory. It says, use the information from the trial balance above to calculate the working capital ratio for the current year in the space provided below. Show all working clearly. Okay, so when I first saw them ask for the working capital ratio, I was a bit confused because working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. But to be honest, it kind of makes sense for it to be the current ratio because that's current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay, so let's take a look at that calculation. Okay, so let's take a look in this trial balance to pick up the current assets and current liabilities. We know assets have debit balances and we know liabilities have credit balances. So the liabilities will actually be easier to pick out because there are only a few items in the credit column. But let's deal with the current assets first. So the first thing I'm seeing is cash. So we're going to put cash in our little list across here. Uh, accounts payable, that's a current liability. So maybe we could fill that in right here as well. Uh, let's see. So we have non account receivable, sorry. Hmm, I skipped out that one. So account receivable, that's also a current asset. So we're going to put that here as well. Now I'm seeing non-current assets, so obviously if it's non-current, it's not going to form part of your current ratio. Carriage invoice is an expense, sales returns, that's a contra revenue, drawings is a kind of contra capital, purchases is an expense, sales is a revenue, inventory. So you might be saying, well, look, that's stock, that's inventory, that's a current asset, and you'd be correct. But look at the date on that, the 1st of June, 2020. That's not at the current year end. Do we have the information for the stock at the current year end? Yes, we do. That's right here in the additional information section. Inventory was valued at 32,000 on the 31st of May, 2021. So we're gonna put that in there. And we had just capital and operating expenses left in the trial balance. So capital is capital, expenses is expenses, neither of those are assets. So our total for current assets is 84,000. And we're gonna divide by 64 to get 1.31 to one. All right, so it says here that the working capital ratio at the end of May 2020 was 1.7 to 1. And they're asking us, based on your calculated ratio in A part 1, identify one significance of the change in ratios for the financial position of the business. Now, this is only worth one mark, so you don't have to go into too much detail. Long story short, if we take a look at the ratio from 2020, it was 1.7 to 1, and our ratio is 1.3 to 1. Now, what that means is that the current ratio decreased. Now, for the current ratio to decrease, one of two things can happen. Either current assets goes down more than current liabilities, current liabilities rises more than current assets, or a combination of the two. So, as you can see, what I wrote here is that one significance of the change in this ratio from 1.7 to 1 to 1.3 to 1 is that it indicates that the proportion of current liabilities to current assets increased. That's a very generic statement there. In other words, current liabilities rose more than did current assets. Alternatively, it could be considered that current assets decreased more over the year than did current liabilities. So I think that should be covered. I mean, it's not the only thing you could put. You could also talk about certain specific assets either going down or certain specific liabilities going up. It's really up to you what you put. But just make sure what you put is logical. Okay, let's take a look at the next part. All right, so it says here, results from calculations of the receivables collection period are shown below for s -Lite Wholesale for the two financial years ended 31st May 2020 and 2021. So as at 31st May 2020, the collection period was 65 days. And as at 31st May 2021, the collection period was 59.7 days. Now, what they want you to do is interpret the significance of these two receivables collection period ratios for the business performance of s -Lite Wholesale. Okay, uh, that's a relatively complicated way to ask a question, as in what is the significance of the movement in the ratios? That's really what they're asking. What does it mean that the ratio went down from 65 days 
to 59.7 days. Well, the collection periods are not a ratio. And I mean, put simply, the decrease in the receivables collection period from 65 days, now FYE means for the year ended, 31st May 2020 to 59.7 days FYE 31 May 2021, indicates that as light wholesale is collecting its debt 5.3 days faster. Long story short. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. All right, so it says, use the information taken from the trial balance on page 12 to prepare an income statement below for as light wholesale for the year ended 31st May 2021. So let's get it done. Okay, so we know the first thing we have to do, of course, is to head up your income statement properly. So please do that, unless of course they do it for you, which they did not do in this particular question, this paper. All right, so cash, accounts payable, no. The first thing we need is sales. Do we have sales? Yes, we do. Sales is 257,500. We're gonna put that in there. I did see sales returns or returns inwards of 900, a bit higher up, so we're gonna put that there. And when we subtract that, we're gonna get net sales. Now from net sales, we need to subtract our cost of goods sold. And we're going to start that, of course, with our opening inventory, which is $37,000. Now, of course, we need to add purchases, which is given to us in the trial balance is $98,000. But there was carriage inwards that we had to add to purchases. So we will do that there and get a subtotal of $99,200, which when added to the inventory at start gives us the cost of goods available for sale of $136,200. Now, what we need to do as well is to subtract the closing stock from the cost of goods available in order to get the cost of goods sold. That's going to give us 32,000 from the 1362, which is 104,200. Now, that is subtracted from your net sales to give us a, a gross profit, sorry, of 152,400. The last thing to do is to subtract your operating expenses from your gross profit, and that's going to give us. 107400 for the net profit. If you want to check out my earlier video on how to prepare an income statement well, the trading section from scratch, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check that out as well. Let's take a look at the last part of the question. Okay, so it says that as lights, as light wholesales bank statement showed an overdraft of $1,118 at the end of May. On that same date, the cash book balance was overdrawn of $678. So they both have overdrafts, of course, but they're different figures. So how do we explain that? Well, that's the purpose of a bank reconciliation statement. The following discrepancies between the two records were discovered. Okay, so number one, a check sent to a supplier, A. Jamil, did not appear on the bank statement, 700. Okay. The bank statement showed a debit for Heaven Prospects personal private home insurance. Hmm, interesting. And we also have the bank had not recorded cash sales deposited on 31st May 2021. All right, so we have to, as they say here, beginning with the bank statement overdraft, prepare a bank reconciliation statement for S-Light Wholesale at 31st May 2021 using the form provided below. Okay, so of course, as we know, you need to head up your statement properly. Now, the question did say to start with the overdraft as per bank statement, which was 1,118. So I do hope you guys know how to do a bank rec starting with the bank statement balance. If you don't and you want to see how to do it, I'm going to put a, a link or a card up in that corner to my bank recs playlist and the link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. Right, bank reps was a very bad topic for me in, in secondary school, but later on in my, my education, I learned how to do those things really, really well, really easily. And um, it's a topic that's close to my heart. So be sure to check those videos out. Okay, so let's take a look. So we know we have to reconcile this, this 1,118 um, to 678. So let's take a look. Uh, so the first thing I'm seeing here is that a check center a supplier did not have any banks. So that is what you call it. <laughs> Apparently, I've forgotten my terminology. No, it's an unpresented check. So what we do with that is we actually when so basically what we're saying is that we made a payment. It hasn't the check hasn't yet come to the bank. It hasn't been presented for payment. But when it does get there, what's going to happen is that the bank account is going to go down, right? And to, the reason we 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 subtract it here is because we've already made the payment. So in the cash book, the money has come out, but that's not reflected in the bank statement. So what we want to do is we want to reflect it in the bank statement, or at least we want to adjust the balance in the bank statement to reflect the money coming out. So it says less unpresented check. All right, next. So this one, this one was a little tricky, 
right? Uh, the bank statement showed that debit for heaven prospects personal private home insurance. So this doesn't really fall into any of those categories very easily because basically what it is is drawings. And what I did is I, I added it back here, right? The reason being is that it's a personal item. So maybe it actually wasn't supposed to come out of your bank statement and you want us to put back money. So I added it back there. Right. The next thing, is, and last thing, as a matter of fact, is the bank had not recorded cash sales deposited on 31st May 2021. So that's a bank lodgement. So what we do with that is we add it. Right. The reason is because we put money into the bank account. It's just not reflected here. So what we want to do is we want to adjust the bank's in the balance to reflect the money going into the account. So you're seeing your open and balance and you're seeing the three adjustments here. And all we have to do is a little arithmetic and as you can see, it balances, it gives us, sorry, it comes to the same overdraft as per the cash book. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the July 2021 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about any of the items that I covered in the video, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free PUA handouts. As per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.